Linux signaling, what are they and how can I use it? Firstly, what is a signal? Signals are a limited form of inter-process communication, IPC. It is an asynchronous notification sent to a process or a specific thread within the same process to notify it that an event occurred. What happens during a signal? When a signal is sent, the operating system will interrupt the target process's normal flow of execution to deliver the signal. Note that this may interrupt any non-atomic operation. If the process had previously registered the signal handler, then that routine is executed. Else, the default signal handler is executed. So isn't this similar to an interrupt? The key difference between a signal and an interrupt is that interrupts are mediated by the processor and handled by the kernel, while signals are mediated by the kernel or syscalls and handled by processes. The operating system may also pass an interrupt as a signal to the process causing it, as we will see later, for example, signal segv. Another thing worth noting is even if your program doesn't have any concurrency due to signals, and since it can interrupt two processes that are non-atomic, you need to take that into account when designing your program. So what are some common signals? Some common signals include hang up, which is signal one, typically occurs when the terminal running the process closes. Interrupt, two. Kill, which is nine, which acts more as the emergency kill switch. Term is terminating nicely, which is 15. Temporary stop is 20, which is for pausing the execution. While continue, 18, is from continuing the execution after you perform a TSTP. So if you're interested, you can pause this video and take a look at this chart of the Unix system calls that I took off Wikipedia. So how do we actually send the signal? Well, there are several approaches to doing this. Number one, you can use keyboard combinations on your terminal. Or number two, you can use the kill system call, alternatively wrapped around the Unix command kill. So some common key combinations, one of which you've likely used before, is control C, which is sig int, the interrupt command. Control Z, which is TSTP, so you can use that to suspend. Or you can do control backslash, which is sig quit, which will be similar to a sig int, however it also performs a core dump. So how do you use the kill syscall? On Unix and Unix-like operating systems, you can simply use the kill command to send a signal to a process. For example, I can do kill1234. This will asynchronously send a sig term signal to process with process ID 1234. If I do kill-91234, this asynchronously sends the sig kill signal to process 1234. So let's do a live demo. Just to demonstrate how signaling works, let's make a Python script that just simply prints numbers in a while loop. And then afterwards, let's execute it. While this is executing, let's check the process. So here we're using PS, we can get the process ID. And then we press Ctrl Z and then we stop it. We notice that the running time is zero, uh, 4 minutes and 48 seconds and it continues to be that. We do have GA runs back in the foreground, so now it's running again. You can see that the CPU time is still running. You can press Ctrl Z again and it also suspends it. And then we can press BG and now it's running in the background. And now finally, we can kill it using kill, putting in the PID, and then we see that we terminate it. So lastly, what about developers? Developers can register their applications to handlers which will be invoked by the kernel once the signal passes through. Recall that signals are asynchronous, and in fact multiple signals can interrupt a currently processing signal. So this is part of the difficulty when designing applications. SigProgMask can be used to block and unblock new signals from coming, with the exception of SigKill and SigStop. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for new videos every Friday at 12pm Eastern. See you all next week and please leave any questions you have down below in the comments.